everyone this is Patricia with Waffle Flower and I'm going to create a layout using some Waffle Flower stamps and dies based on the June inspiration. So what I'm going to do is I'm starting out with an 8.5 by 11 white cardstock base. It's a plain cardstock so I can stamp on it. I have my mason jar on the desk and then I'm going to put my stamping block on top of it just so that I can get get that to line up evenly on my block. Now I'm going to go in on the left at about an inch and a half and then on the right at an inch and a half. I put a mark and then I put a mark at the four inch. Now going vertically I'm using the stamp to just kind of gauge. It's about maybe a quarter of an inch that I'm marking underneath each stamp. I'm not going to get this totally perfect. I know that it will be off a little bit but I will have some more die cuts and things that will help cover up some of the imperfections. And I'm okay with imperfections. I don't normally measure things for layouts like this unless I really, really have to. So it's just a guide. And what I'm going to do is stamp in black ink where the pencil mark is. I am using the lid of the mason jar stamp, the center of that to stamp. So I'm going to continue on throughout the whole layout and cover this with the mason jars. And like I said, it's you can see maybe the little spots aren't totally perfect, but it's it gave me the look that I wanted. So I erased those pencil marks, and now I want to use the filler stamp to fill these with some colors from Gelettos that are based on the photo inspiration. Stamps like this are perfect for stamping with gelettos because it's that they don't have a lot of detail to them. So I'm just going to completely cover the stamp with the color and then I have an empty spray bottle filled with just regular water and I'm going to give three quick little bursts of water onto it. Three little quick little spritz and then stamp onto the layout. Now I will say that I normally would not be rubbing the gelatos and spraying while I'm standing over the layout because I did have some of the gelatos fall. So just keep that in mind when you do your layout that you will get maybe some droppings and get some marks that you don't want. I'll be able to cover those up. But before you go on to your next color, you could see that I used a baby wipe and then I used a paper towel. So start again with a dry stamp and then continue the process of coloring in your mason jars. Now the stamp set also comes with a filler for the lid, but I didn't use that. I wanted just the bottom part of the mason jar colored. Now as I continue to color these, I, I didn't continue with the same exact pink, blue, green on each row. I just started to randomly kind of checkerboard patterned these colors around on the layout. And now I'm going to create my own embellishments for the layout. I'm going to use this Beloved stamp set and I'm going to use the, the little branch in the flowers. Now the branch or the leaves, I'm going to stamp in three different colors of green. I'm going to have a variety of different colors here. So I'm going to stamp those in each color green about three or four times. And for the flowers, I'm going to stamp the large and the small. And I, again, I'm going with the inspiration from the photo piece. So I'm going to do blue and pink here. And now I'm going to get the center of the flowers, which are little dots. I'm going to line those up on my stamped image here. And then I'm going to grab those with my stamping block so that that way it makes stamping the centers of all of these flowers very, very quick. And now I'll line up the matching dies that go with the stamp set and cut out the leaves and then cut out the flowers. Now a little quick tip to cut out those flowers and get the die to match perfectly, I found that it's easy to turn it over and you can kind of see where it's indented three times. Match up those three little indents and then you get your your match done pretty quickly. So then this doesn't take a lot of time to cut out. Now you can see that I also stamped and die cut the bow that goes with the Good Stuff stamp set. And I know that I'll use that somewhere. Now I started out with the photo that was printed horizontal. and 
The horizontal was okay, but the, so there was something about the photo that just was not working for me. So I just felt like this photo went better with the feel of the layout, with the homespun kind of look that it has with the mason jars. And I printed it in black and white and I did a portrait. Now for my title, I want to get this started. I have some of the dies placed, but I want to get that title down and I want to decide if I need to add any journaling before I commit to any of the die cuts that I had have prepared here. So I line up the um, the stamps here to finish the title. I'm going to do, I believe, Good to be Loved. So it's a combination title here. I use the letter dies from Waffle Flower for the good part and I cut those from foam. And now I'm trying to decide where I want the stamped part of the title to go. And I really believe that because of the stamped and, and so much going on in the background that my title needs to be close together. I can't have it too separated. I can't have the good on the left of the photo and then to be on the right of the photo. So I need to have it kind of clustered together here. So I stamped that a couple of times on a scrap piece of paper before I stamp it onto the layout. And I moved that loved closer in as well instead of on the mason jar underneath the photo. So now everything is clustered together. And I want to add just a little bit more stamping here from those alpha stamps. There's, a, there's one stamp that says family and then there's parentheses. So I put the parentheses family and I'm going to stamp this above the good. And again that just creates a nice little cluster right there. Sometimes I add journaling and sometimes I don't. I just, I really love this photo and the feel that I've created with the mason jars and the flowers and the bow and everything. It's in the title. Everything just works together and I don't feel like I really need any journaling. So because of that, I can go ahead and start committing to some things and go ahead and get the title and the photo into place. And I know for sure I want the biggest cluster right here by the photo. So I'm going to commit to that and use my ATG gun and some foam adhesive to create some dimension and texture and a nice little cluster right there by the photo. I'm happy with my title, so I need to go ahead and get this adhered. So I get the backs off of all the foam die cuts here and I use a spare pair of tweezers that I use for crafting to help get those into place. Now they're tricky. They will move very easily because they're so small and, and intricate. And they're not perfectly placed, you can see. But again, I'm really not a perfectionist when it comes to scrapbooking. Especially layouts like this that have a carefree look to them. Now I wanted to add a little bit more color to this layout and it's something that I like to do a lot on my layouts. I trimmed about a fourth of an inch around the layout, the white card stock base and then trimmed an extra pattern paper at eight and a half by eleven to use as the background base. So it creates a nice little border around the entire layout and adds a little bit more color. Now I'm going to go ahead and go around all the mason jars either use foam adhesive or my scotch ATG gun and adhere the flowers or leaves and as I do this, I also notice that I want a little bit more dimension down here by the, the, um, by the photo. And it just it creates a little bit more dimension. And it creates a, a lot more color. The, by the photo, I want to have more darker colors. And darker colors are what you're going to see first. And because of that, I want you to see the photo first and then see everything else. So this is kind of a tricky layout because I have all the die cuts and fun little things to add to each of the mason jars. But as you can see, I pulled some of the, the leaves of the branches off. And here I'm tearing some of them and making them shorter, giving them a different length. And that way it, it, it helps the layout not look so branchy looking and so cluttered looking. It gives it a little bit more depth and a little bit more of a layered look. I just have a little bit more stamping I want to add before this is done. So I used one of the branch stamps that has the matching flower buds that go along with it. So I stamped it in the same color green that I've used earlier for the leaves and I used pink for the flowers. 
Now I added another branch down here at the bottom that's a dark color. And again, it's a dark color, so it's bringing attention to my photo. Now I'm going to use a mix of this airbrush medium and just plain black paint. This is what I use to do my paint splatters. I don't really have a ratio of how I mix it. I just do a little bit of black paint with a little bit of the medium in this clear bottle. It's a little thick, so it takes a little bit of time to get it to, to, to splatter, but I can get really nice dots from it. So I'm going to flick that a little bit. It takes a little bit of time to get it off. I don't want to re-put it in my bottle because then I'll have larger splatters. I want it the smaller splatters. So all I did was date stamp it and added another little sticker to this. And that finishes this layout. Thank you so much for joining me.